thirty-three minutes past the hour. It is the Jeff Santo Show that you are tuned into, coming to you live from the South Coast here in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. You know, folks, uh, we are uh, always lucky to have the contributors that we do from, you know, the great uh, political folks like Austin and Paleologus uh, to great journalists like Bob Kuzak. Uh, But it's uh, very rare to have a combination of um, uh, a great activist, a great uh, journalist and a great musician. That's why we call him the Renaissance Man. Uh, That's why we're giving him a couple of days this week uh, to come on the program. We'll focus a lot more on the music and uh, sports scene in uh, the great uh, 206 on Friday. But today, we bring in the great journalist and, uh, and again, political activist uh, from the 206. Again, Seattle, folks, if you've never been there, one of the great cities in America, one of the most progressive cities in America, for that matter, in the world, and connected to the great Cascadia, which is including Vancouver and Oregon. And, uh, of course, there's a Vancouver, uh, Washington, too, but Vancouver, uh, British Columbia. And I think that's where we're going to start with our good friend MTC. Uh, Mr. MTC, how are you, sir? I'm in the studio. going to have to call you Jimmy Jr. Sleep, but, it, <laughs> hey, it's 70 degrees in Seattle. It's like the warmest day of the year so far. Uh, we've had the oh coldest my. spring you've ever seen. Today it's 70, so um, I guess that's warm. We should all be really thankful today. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Hey, I want to start with this awful situation which has happened over the last two weeks, both in Buffalo and Uvalde, Texas. And and that is, and I want to get your perspective um, on gun safety and the gun laws in Washington and therefore in the city of Seattle, in the state of Washington, and, and what it is in Canada. And I don't know if you heard today, but uh, Justin Trudeau, uh, the prime minister, the son of Pierre Trudeau, the progressive champion, um, many years ago. Uh, and, um, you know, I look at what he did today in Parliament. Again, different system compared to our cockamamie Congress. But the fact is, is that what he um, did by saying suspension of firearm sales, you know, I mean, here you get the NRA and Gun Owners of America and all these other corporations uh, out there. You know, they would be they would be having you know, oh, it, it's the Second Amendment, ah, blah, 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 blah. you know. Um, but to me, and I guess you know, because I know you spent a lot of time across the border there, what an hour and a half or whatever from Seattle. This is just another horror show of America. And I'm just wondering what your Canadian friends, when you see this back-to-back Buffalo and Texas, you know, they must think, what kind of country, Mark, are you living in? I want to get your thoughts here. When Michael Moore had his television show, TV Nation, uh, one of the episodes is he went to the border. And on the American side, he put a stack of rifles. And on the Canadian side, he put a stack of rifles. And he waited to see who would pick them up because they were they had a big sign saying free. On the American side, those rifles lasted about 10 minutes. On the Canadian side, <laughs> nobody touched them. And that's a yeah. pretty good yeah. example of the difference between um, the, the gun nuts in the United States and the attitude about weapons in Canada. So I'm not surprised. Uh, however, you are correct. Uh, we would have the right wingers here screaming about how the Democrats are going to take your guns away. They always use that as one of their scare tactics um, on this issue. Uh, we saw one of the best protests I've ever seen against the NRA here in Seattle a couple of years ago when Brandy Carlisle, our Grammy Award winning singer songwriter, and Dave Matthews showed up. And the most popular song of the whole day was uh, their cover of Bob Dylan's The Times They Are Changing. And Jay Inslee was there along with the governor of Connecticut. Jay Inslee just said, you know, the sooner we turn the state over to the young folks, uh, the much better off we'll all be because they get it. And I think yeah, if you talk to young kids who are actually go to school and have this fear, uh, they're all for some kind of gun control. If you talk to um, some of the NRA propagandists, of course, then, like I said, they're going to turn that against the, the liberals and the, the Democrats who want to take your rights away. So there you go. It's uh, used for p- political propaganda 
uh, reason, that whole argument. There's no reason for anyone to be against reasonable gun control. I mean, if the laws are reasonable and there's reasonable restrictions, then everybody should be for that, right? We should have background checks. We should have uh, limits on how many rounds can be fired per minute. I mean, it's ridiculous. And you talk to the, the survivors and you talk to their families and you talk to the people who have died and their families and they'll tell you the same thing, Jeff. So I'm confident that most of the people involved in that shooting would be all for some kind of gun control at this point. Yeah, interesting, and, and I think uh, um, you know I, I thought as much, but it, it's great to hear it. Um, you know, from your your perspective there in, in Western uh, Western uh, United States, and of course uh, Western Canada as well. Uh, to me, it's it's just another another disgraceful situation here in the United States that these things continue to uh, to exist. And again, I, I don't think you have to be political. Uh, to be against this. And one of the great things, and I don't know if you had a chance to see all this, is that when Steve Kerr, the head coach of the Golden State Warriors, who he himself was a victim, his father got assassinated as a professor, as a uh, president of uh, American University in Beirut many years ago, you know, was just uh, apoplectic, uh, you know, at a press conference, you know, which usually is reserved for pregame of the Golden State Warriors, you know, ends up, you know, just you know, basically making a point that should have been made by every Democratic legislator. And then and it's, you know, it's crickets. We don't we don't hear it. And even I don't know what Jayapal has said and I don't know what Sawan is saying. But again, we're going to have to depend upon, you know, the great progressives that Seattle exports, you know, to be to be out on this. I know that Bob Kuzak, we talked about him earlier, you know, great, great insider on Capitol Hill, says that maybe next week when they come back. But the last time, last time I checked, Mark, I mean, they have microphones and computers um, and, you know, TV cameras can come to Jayapal's office uh, in Seattle uh, or anybody else's. I mean, I know it doesn't take Washington to come back to Congress with people to talk. You know, I'm just wondering, you know, we need more leadership. And when Steve Kerr and, 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 and Chris Russo, who I watch, you know, from high heat basis when he screams to say, you know, good afternoon, everybody, can come out and articulate the horror. I mean, it just goes to show you how disconnected, you know, our, our Congress, particularly the Republican Party writ large, and, and a handful of Democrats, you know, they don't care. And, and, and they're just, you know, deaf and dumb, you know, in comparison to what's happening in the rest of the world. Your thoughts on that as somebody who's also in the music world? Yeah, I mean, it, I think it's really important that for musicians who were set to sing at a, in a concert uh, over the weekend for the annual NRA uh, uh, convention have canceled their performances so good. Even Don McLean, who's who's been you know pro NRA at times, but also Larry Gatlin of the Gatlin Brothers, um, they you know McLean is best known for his 1976 American Pie. Everybody American Pie, you know, right? But I, everybody and their brother knows that song, right? And yeah, the, the fact that artists are willing to take a stand. I mean, I'm waiting to hear from Neil Young about this. People, singer Lee Greenwood. You know, for known for that song, God Bless America, also told CNN that he yeah, and his band right, will not right, right. play. So, you know, this is serious. People are sick of it, and I'm glad that artists are finally standing up and saying, hey, we're not going to be a part of this. We're not going to give a, a blanket endorsement, endorsement to something that, you know, unfortunately I heard referred to a couple of days on social media as the National Republican Army, the NRA, you know. I mean... It's time for gun control. People know that. And there's just like with climate change and all sorts of other really important issues, the Republicans need to stop standing in the way. It's time. And I know that my state legislators and my congresswoman, Pramila Jayapal, are for expanded gun control, um, expanded women's rights here, and all sorts of things that are sort of headed in in a different direction than some of these other states. So I'm just wondering, you know, how many more of these tragedies can happen? Each one of these kids are going to be suffering with PTSD the rest of their lives. It's like a soldier having gone off to war. And is this really what we want our children to experience? Is this the America that we want to see? No. I know that people in Europe, 
And my friends in Paris think we're all crazy here and everybody's running around with a bunch of gun-toting fanatics. Right. And it's not true. The majority of the country is reasonable on this issue. It's just the NRA and some of their supporters and some certain governors in southern states who just want to use this as another divisive issue. And it's not time for divisiveness. It's time for unity. It's time for healing. And I'm hoping that the music can help heal people, too, because it's been a, an amazing healing um, influence in my life and in other people's lives. And I'm hoping that some of these artists can get together and do some kind of a benefit for the families that, that um, school and, and at Rob Elementary School. Uh, it's time for artists to stand together and speak out, too, and try to try to spend some, uh, spread some love and healing during this time. They really need to be out there and, and supporting the victims and their families. So I'm going to have to slip off here for a second. I apologize for that. I'll be right back. Thank you. No, that's all right. Let's stay right there. We're talking with Mark Taylor Canfield here on the Jeff Santos Show. We'll get back. Uh, Mark will call back. But in the meantime, uh, let's go to uh, to our good friend John in Minneapolis um, and, and get his thoughts about that. You know, you're not far from Winnipeg, uh, are you, um, John? And again, another Canadian outlet. Um, and yeah. you know, the, Justin Trudeau, you know, does it in one day. And we're over here, you know, talking about whether or not it's good to have an assault weapon out there. It's in insane and what we have here just a few hours away you know i mean that's that's when you know that your government is out of control well yeah our government is out of control obviously uh in canada uh their system has produced far more uh far less violence and and a healthy society literally because of course they have medicare for all and they've had it uh, for years, uh, there was 40 million people that live there. There is still some issues, but I mean, let's face it. Uh, this is a cultural sickness that we've created in this society, you know. And the republic, I, I would, I'm kind of skeptical as to whether most people are against it. Uh, I, I would say that. Um, yeah, if you ask them one question. But when it comes down to it, apparently th this is a, a society that enjoys gratuitous violence, and uh, they don't really care. What else can you say about it? I mean, I know that sounds really uh, judgmental, I suppose, but I'm sick of people saying, well, you know, the majority of people, uh, you know, really don't, want this well the majority of the people apparently don't have a backbone or a political will to do anything about it nor do the either political party well, certainly in uh, congress like, you they know, don't. Nancy, uh, no uh, nancy pelosi will support uh you know a gun rights person gun rights and you know how most of these people that support the status quo look at that there's one right the Second Amendment. I have the right to take a gun and blast, do whatever I want with it. And you can't take that gun away from me. What I say is, you know, if, if we could convince them to insert the, the, the gun up their patuzzi, we would solve a big problem. But, you know, they're not going to go for that because, of course, you know, they want to live. Yeah, I don't think uh, so. And the rest of us have <laughs> And, and the rest of us want to have to live in fear because we can't create a society that doesn't like violence. We're greedy. We're, uh, you know, we have uh, no regard, apparently, for those 19 children that died, nor what happened in Sandy Hook and what happened uh, down in Florida with those high school students. I mean, do you, do you realize the list of people that have died in gun violence in schools, it's about 180 since Columbine. Now, how can I? In good yeah, you know, talk about talk this about this, society? but the offspring. No. Yeah, no, it's not a peace loving yeah. society. This is yeah. a violent society well, in, in, in every way well, in which it, we it market things. And, and, to, uh, it, and, and we kill right, brown and right. black, and, and that it, they're, they're second yeah. class citizens. But I want to give just That's a right. sense of hope here, though. And it goes right yeah. to your state no, of I Minneapolis. I, I, I don't if, mean, if the people yeah. at, at the. 
Yeah, just one yeah. second. Uh, you're yeah. on a roll. I hear you. I'll, I'll, I'll get back. Yeah. Uh, when you can, as Bob Kuzak just talked about, when you can bring together the right wing um, police officers, uh, you know, who are against the assault weapons ban, and again, uh, those who have been um, on the on the other side and victimized by police, uh, to come together to ban assault weapons. I mean, again, if if I'm President Biden, you know, that's another photo op, and that's a rose garden ceremony in bringing together these both people. Again, I'm no big fan of, right. of uh, most big city police departments, but that's that's something right. you can do to preser- but, but, preserve, you know, some kind of understanding of of people being able to walk down the street. Yeah, and or go you to know, school. I, I mean, I, I right, and you know, the police departments, what they really are trying to preserve is their own skin because they are spineless. Did, did you see what happened with those people? Those those uh, people that were there to protect the students, they didn't do anything. They had to wait for the border police to come in, and they just they just took action. They wouldn't allow the parents to go even and save their own children. But you know that some of those police officers tried to save their own children? So this is where we're at. The police here in this city are absolutely disgusting, and nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. Absolutely nothing has changed in this city. And the violence perpetrated by the police and the violence perpetrated by the criminals, uh, and we're left in the middle, you know, the population of this city. Thanks, uh, Mr. Bob Kroll of the police union, the white supremacist neo-Nazi who ran the, the police union, which runs, obviously, this very nice Minnesota. We, we talk about Minnesota nice. Well, you know, I mean, it's just hip, hip, hypocrisy. Absolutely. Uh, this is the... Well, not uh, when you have that situation police. in Minnesota, that's for sure. Well, well, unfortunately, I have to say that because nobody else uh, is saying it, but some city council persons are saying it. Do they get listened to? No. And what does the uh, elite, even of the Democratic Party, do about it? Nothing. They really don't do anything. They make a little tweak here and a little tweak there. They'll get another police, uh, you know, commissioner here in Minneapolis. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't change the police union, you're not going to change anything. And their culture yeah. is one of hatred of both of everybody here, but particularly black and brown people. They pit them against us and the rest of the population of the state and the political people. And it just goes, and the beat goes on. It just does. I'm sorry. The beat goes I don't on. Mean to be, no, no, it, I think you're yeah, spot on, John. I mean, it's but, unfortunate that yeah. this is the case. Again, I'm hoping that police and 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 the those in the African American community can kind of come together, um, you know, to uh, to ban assault weapons. But this is a this is a horror show. This is America, um, you know, at center stage, and it's why yep. people around the world, as uh, as our good friend MTC was saying, you know, look at. Look at America as both a joke and a, and a horror show, and you know they uh, and this has been going on for a good uh, thirty five years. I remember flying back from from London, uh, you know, and, and people yep. saying, you know, every time I turn on the TV, somebody's getting murdered. It's true, you know, the yeah, violence and, in this country and, by guns know, but, in particular. There's no other way right. around, in no other yeah. place in first world uh, in the first world. Yeah. No, I mean, I I was just shocked. Uh, Somebody from my church sent me something on Facebook, and the list was about 180, maybe even more, because, you know, it was hard to count that many names. You know, I lost track after a while. Is it 180 or is it 200? I thought I may have uh, lost a few, but this is how many shootings in schools. So that's not all of the shootings that have happened. And, you know, they they got a hold of it. In 1995, in Australia, they got a hold of it in in Scotland. But you know what these idiots say? Oh, well, they just switch to guns, or they get this, or they get that. They can make any argument they want, no matter how superfluous or stupid, and they get listened to. Why? Because 
unfortunately, there's not enough of you guys out there. There's not enough shows like like this. Right. Yeah. And, there's uh, a lot you know, of just, them. Yeah. They're all over right wing radio yeah. and on Fox TV. You're right on. All right, my friend. We just yeah. uh, reconnect with our good yeah. friend MTC. Oh, Thank good, you, John. Good, good. Uh, spot yeah. on. Yeah. Uh, spot on as well. Um, all the time. Uh, great, great caller. A great friend of the program and yours truly. Good friend, John. All right, let's go back to Seattle. Our good friend, uh, uh, Mr. MTC, has uh, received a better line. Uh, let's see if we can connect with him. Uh, Mark, can you hear me? Yes, yes. You know, I was thinking about that song, um, Crossy Stills and Natch. No, it wasn't Crossy Stills and Natch. Shoot, Buffalo Springfield, was it? Something's happening here. What it yes, is yes, yes, exactly yes. Yeah. For what it's worth is the name of the song. Going over there, telling me right. I've got to be where. Yeah, those kind of '60s songs keep going through my mind these days. Like, well, it's really, very appropriate uh, because the violence that yeah. really connected, particularly the late '60s. You know, 1968 was a horrific year in our history. Yeah. You know, you you get the Tet Offensive, you kill Bobby Kennedy, you kill Martin Luther King. I mean, you know, and and it just was horrific, and it showed America really. Uh, and if you listen to you know the commentary, even people like David Brinkley, you know, was saying, "What are we doing here? What even?" Worth is an election, uh, you know. You know what are we going to do with it? And of course, it followed many years after, including you know the resignation of, uh, of Richard Nixon and so forth. Yeah, I mean this this is unfortunately returning to that kind of scenario. Um, and you have ineffective leadership with LBJ. You know, at that time, four years into Vietnam, you know he he basically just sort of you know let the country uh, go to hell in a handbasket from '66 on. We stopped all the civil rights and voting rights and all the focus on Medicare and Medicaid, you know, to put money into Vietnam. Again, more violence. And then this is where we are today, unfortunately. You know, I mean... Yeah, you know, we also had the Kent State shootings. Sure. And the Jackson State killings, which most people don't know anything about, but uh, in Jackson, Mississippi, on May 14th, 1970, uh, state and city police confronted a group of students in their dorm room, and sometime after midnight, the police opened fire, killing two students and injuring 12. And that a, a event happened 11 days after the Kent State shootings, in which the National Guard killed four students at Kent State University. So we know what weapons can do to peaceful people. Uh, it's been used, unfortunately, by our own police departments against especially young black men uh, in this country over and over again. And now we see what's happening in the schools, and it's just unacceptable. I mean, the idea that, you know, uh, teachers need to be armed is just ridiculous. That's not the kind of society that we should be living in. And I hope that it is some of this is not a result of some of the really violent computer games that are out there, because I'm really shocked at that, how many young people spend so much of their time playing these really violent games that are basically like training you know for the military or something I mean, yeah really no that's scary. a bad thing although that that does go on in other parts of the world and because they have better gun safety you don't see the uh the same kind of laws but you're right it is it's been going on for a long long time i remember going to movies in the 80s and 90s um you know and and benign actors like christian slater you know picking up guns and so forth to solve uh you know to solve uh you know a conflict to me is is just where we've gone out, out of control in the great youtube song and and that to me and by the way just to kind of put a, a, a you know a, a music piece on this you know it was canadian born neil young which did the four dead in ohio in 1970 it was neil young that called out you know canadian born neil young that called out mr rogan for his racist comments and you know it wouldn't surprise me that over the next few days we see him say it again again it's great American artists. You mentioned a couple of them in Bob Dylan and and, uh, and others. But if you think about it, you know, I mean, thank God we we have a good relationship with our friends to the north. You know, they have they have stated the truth time and time again, and it's you know, thank God for them. I guess I should say, leave it at that. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a different attitude north of the border here. Uh, you, you see the difference immediately when it comes to things like socialized medicine, uh, gun regulation, uh, women's rights. It's just amazing. Of course, the Canadians have a lot of problems with dealing with ind uh, indigenous people indigenous right people, now. Right? Yeah, that's not that's perfect. No place is, but you're right. 
Yeah. yeah, they've they've had that problem for years. There's been a number of good movies about it. Hey, MTC, we'll talk to you on Friday, my friend. We'll get more into some of the good things that you guys are doing there in the 206 and fun, too. Go back to your uh, fantastic studio and make some more good music, my man. We'll talk to you on Friday. Thank you, man. Keep rocking, Jeff. Check out my videos at YouTube, everybody. Love you. Take care. See you later. Talk to you on Friday, my friend. I want to thank Ron Quiter for producing this broadcast. Thank you all for listening, folks, the best callers, listeners, and contributors in radio. We'll be back uh, tomorrow with our foreign policy team. Of course, Garvey and Corb and John Nichols. Until then, my name is Jeff Santos. Please keep on fighting peacefully. Until tomorrow, my name is Jeff Santos, and it is now my time to say I gotta go.